The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, 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 TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesamento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesamento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Uh, I started the um, first chart into the Tiger uh, TV uh, with gold because we've had such a um, you know amazing market here in the last couple of days. Uh, yesterday's high was an exact seven eight six of the high we made uh, you know way back in uh, November, and then the market sold off. Um, you know, dramatically last night and stopped exactly at the 786 retracement at that 1692 level. And uh, now it still has the potential, you know, to move higher. Um, as long as we stay above the uh, 1690 level, uh, you have to be bullish on the gold because we have the higher bottoms and it's holding these numbers that we look at, you know, the 618 and 786 numbers on retracements. And uh, so that, you know, confirms that you're in an uptrend. So as long as we stay above that 1690 level uh, per ounce in gold, we have a pretty good chance of seeing um, the market uh, go higher. Now, we had a interesting, um, I'm going to do the silver here because we had a very similar situation uh, in silver. Uh, it actually uh, was actually acting a lot stronger than the uh, than the gold, so I'm going to, and this has been happening for quite a while, you know, silver has been uh, um, overperforming over gold recently, and on this last little uh, correction that we had in silver, uh, yesterday's high was a uh, perfect Gartley uh, sell pattern, uh, you know, when the Fed was coming in to, uh, into the market at the, when it was trading at 3380 and uh, since it's broken over $6,000 a contract, and it's down to the to the 50% level uh, again. Now remember that the um, the gold was down at the 786 retracement while all this was going on. So <clears throat> this is why we uh, sort of watch uh, watch both of them. Uh, silver is a lot more difficult to trade. It has about one sixth of the volatility and uh, players that we have in the gold market. And gold is by far the better thing to uh, better thing to trade. Silver is okay for really long-term uh, positions, but you have to risk probably $0.40, cents, which is $2,000 uh, a contract. And for most people, including this old cowboy, that's uh, out of my risk parameter. I like to keep my risk a lot smaller than that. So as long as silver can hold this um, 3250 level, um, it also is still in a uh, still in an uptrend. But, boy, if they break, uh, you know, ooh, they're going to look really, really bad. Um, whether that happens or not, you know, we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see, you know, what it's going to look like as we go along. Um, the um, I know I someone asked, you know, why am I working today? I'm not working very much, but uh, I woke up. I felt pretty good, but boy, it really it really drags on you. I don't know if it's a function of old age or what it is, but boy, it really uh, this stuff that I have, whatever it is, is not uh, not the best stuff in the world. Now, someone asked, um, um, since this is the commodity hour, they asked me to take a look at the sugar market. And so I'm going to put um, uh, the daily sugar uh, chart going back to last September, and we can take a look at it because it is completing a, uh, a pattern that is, uh, uh, you know, very important. If you'll notice, um, in September the market made a, a beautiful A, B, you know, C, D pattern that, that culminated up at that 2180 level. Uh, it was perfect in time and price. And then the market came down, and now we're forming a butterfly pattern, and uh, that's what we're looking at uh, right now. The fact is, uh, you know, silver's trading around 1846 right now, and the risk here, you don't have to risk very much. It's not like trading silver where you've got to risk an arm and a leg. You know, you can risk, uh, you know, 40 cents in sugar, which is only 400, 410, uh, 40 cents, yes, 400, $440, no, $420. And uh, I only trade sugar probably, um, well, maybe once or twice a year. And uh, this is December. And, you know, frankly, ever since I uh, was at Drexel, 
I've done very little trading uh, in December. I've always uh, I do some trading, of course, but uh, you know my my uh, production of number of trades that I do is way off because I spend as much time as I can with my friends and family and and uh, enjoying that. So, um, but if it's uh, holding up here after the first year, that's something we might want to take a look at because it's something that uh, does mo does move well. It trades technically technically very well. In fact, every commodity that we look at. As long as it has uh, a lot of players and as long as it has good volatility, it's going to follow these numbers because it's nothing more than fear and greed. And, uh, you know, that's all you're looking at. When prices are going up, you know, there's more people buying. When prices are going down, there's more people selling. You know, that's really the, the, the bottom line of, of what we're looking at. So uh, the price on sugar right now, we're at 1846 And uh, if it goes below 1810. I would assume that this would be wrong because the actual, you know, 1.27 expansion from the November low uh, to the uh, expansion to the downside, 127 came in at the uh, uh, 1830 uh, level. That's been the low, and so as long as it can hold above that, that 127 is still holding up pretty well. Silver has a pretty good following. Um, sugar has a pretty good following, and uh, it does. Uh, attract a lot of, you know, international uh, uh, speculators and stuff. So it can be traded. I, I just don't trade it as much because it's not nearly as, as liquid as, you know, the Forex and some of the other commodities, you know, that, that we watch all the time. And that's the ones that we're really, uh, really interested in, you know, to see how, you know, see how they're doing. Now, um, I wanted to um, go to uh, the, the corn market here because uh, – Oh dear, I've lost it. Just one second here. Well, let me let me do wheat first, and then I'll find the corn here. But um, we have we have some problems in our grain markets. I mean, they they they're supposed to be bullish, folks, and they're not acting bullish. Believe me, uh, the uh, the the amount of uh, selling coming into these markets is really, you know, a, a very uh, a disconcerting. And so we have to watch, um, you know, what is what is causing this. Now I put into the Tiger TV the uh, the price of uh, wheat. Uh, this is the uh, nearby contract, and uh, we're completing now uh, a big A B C D on the downside. Uh, if you'll notice in the wheat, uh, it's been in a downtrend since July. We had two perfect Gartley sell signals. A B C D uh, sell signals up into September was one, and then we had another one you know, back in November, and that is completing these uh, price objectives now down around $8 uh, a bushel in the wheat. But the real the real problem, um, the step uh, stepsister of this uh, group here is the corn market because, you know, corn is uh, the one that is the largest uh, commodity that we have and um, as far as, you know, the, the amount that we have in the, the grain markets and stuff. And I, I just want to, to bring you up to date of what's happening on the, uh, I'll do the weekly chart here, and so you can see it uh, a little better. And uh, I'm going to make it very, uh, just give me one second here. I can, uh, I, I want to make sure we see the bottom when we started this, uh, you know, the, the, the drought markets, you know, had a perfect Gartley at the 618 uh, retracement, and then we moved up. But the real problem that we have here in the corn now and I'm going to, uh, you know, bring it up to you so you can see it because it's very important. Um, because you know, I look at these numbers, and that's that's really all I look at. If I if I can see what the numbers are doing, that tells me where I think the the support and resistance is. And and in corn, you know, we are having a um, this is the third test now of the 382 retracement. You know, we had one way back in September. Uh, we had another one in November. Now we've got one now. But the problem is, is that we've had lower highs during that time. And uh, once we break below uh, seven dollars a bushel, that's going to set up a uh, price objective at least six dollars and thirty-three cents a bushel, which uh, you know that is uh, considerably higher or lower than we were when we were at the high at uh, you know eight fifty-six. And uh, those of you that listened to the show when it was at 856, that was a 1.618 expansion, you know, on the um, on the weekly charts, and we were telling everyone that this is where we want to do it. And of course, it was right in the middle of the drought uh, that happened, uh, you know, in July. Yeah, actually, it was late, early August, and um, that's another, you know, example of how the 
the charts are usually, uh, you know, they're usually right. So the news that you have, the, the, the market is following the, the, the news of the market, and um, but believe me, the, the, that's not the news that's doing it. It's the people that are buying and selling and the anticipation of whether they think things are going to uh, going to be, you know, either bullish or bearish. That's the main thing. Because when things are the worst, you know, that's when, uh, you know, there's nobody wanting to buy it, and that's where your risk is going to be the smallest. And when things are very expensive, you know, that's the best time to sell it because everybody wants to sell it. So uh, what you have to do is to, you know, turn your thinking around and, and think about how much money you have at risk if you want to try a, um, a trade at, at a top or a bottom, because that's all you're doing is you're, you're, you're assume, assuming some risk. Uh, and if you do your analysis correctly, your probability will be more positive than it will be negative, and that's where you make, uh, you know, your best, uh, best uh, returns. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the corn market, and uh, it really looks like it's uh, getting ready to, to break down here. It only has to break about another, oh, seven, eight cents, and it's going to break below the 382 uh, that we made back in September, and that sets up a price objective. Of, uh, I'll put this in here so you can take a look at it, and we'll start following this on the, uh, on the show here. And that sets up a price, price objective at the 618, which would be $6.00. In uh, 34 cents a bushel, and uh, that would that would make that a Gartley pattern, and uh, it, it, that that will be an interesting spot because uh, that was the old high, you know, from when the markets broke out uh, in August of uh, 2011. Then we sold off to the uh, May lows, and then the drought happened, and so we're going to be touching those highs, and that's going to be uh, another interesting uh, spot to uh, to look at. Now they. Um, they have a, um, uh, I hope I saved this because I've, I've prepared it for the show, but I've had so many uh, technical problems uh, with uh, uh, getting stuff out, and uh, it's been a real difficulty uh, trying to get information and stuff. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm intellectually challenged when it comes to a computer. I just, uh, they don't like me very much, and uh, I don't like them either. And, uh, but they do give you a lot of good information. Unfortunately, they don't give it to you when you want it, but uh, that's the way it works. Um, but we have to watch the, uh, uh, the, 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 the all of these commodities because if they, if they start to roll over, then that's where we have a, a situation where you're going to uh, you know, have some uh, deflation occurring. Is that, is in fact, what's going to happen? Um, <laughs> And we're going to take a break here, but I want to mention uh, something about the Mayan Mayan calendar thing, and then uh, I'll end that. that. Just don't worry about the end of the world on December 22nd, folks. Um, don't pay your bills until the 23rd. That's the best thing you can do. That's all I can tell you. Okay, I'll be back in just a few minutes. We've got to take a little break here, and that's it. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. 
Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. holidays from TFNN. Our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale is back this December at TFNN. Normally we offer only a 10 to 20% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases, but through December 19th only when you purchase Tiger Dollars to spend on any of our products, you get a 25% bonus on your purchase and up to 10% of whatever you spend will be donated to the Salvation Army in your name. You'll receive a personalized thank you letter directly from our local Clearwater Salvation Army Administrator in appreciation of your donation. Tiger Dollars can be used on any of our newsletters or subscriptions, never expire, and are fully transferable. Take advantage of our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale of the year right now. Visit TFNN.com for all the details and to make your purchase today. Happy Holidays from TFNN. What type of investor are you? conservative, moderate, or aggressive. No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks, and I put in the uh, Tiger TV, the uh, weekly chart of soybeans. Um, and uh, you'll see that when it was making the high, it was making a huge A, B, C, D pattern, and it's, you know, that was the thing that uh, you know, stopped the market uh, right in the midst of the drought. And then we've had, uh, over the past uh, oh, four months, we've had a pretty uh, uh, strong correction. But what's interesting about this, and if you get a chance to go into Tiger TV, look at this, because this is really a beautifully tech technical picture of soybeans, because... It shows the 24-week uh, cycle that has been in soybeans, and it, it bottomed exactly on the 61% retracement, um, you know, to the exact penny. And uh, that's the one that, you know, that we look at first when we're looking at retracement patterns of 618 and then 786. And then in the expansions, we look at 1.27 and 1.618. I try to keep it as simple as possible because there's so many things that are there that you really can't do it. Now, what we'd be looking at here, now beans are acting far better than the uh, corn, and they're acting far better, you know, than the wheat. And so um, what, I, what I will be looking for uh, in the next, uh, next few days it will be looking for a buy in the wheat market because we're completing um, that ABCD pattern uh, several times. And, in fact, what we should do as a, as a little class project here, let me, let me do the wheat again, and we will try to... Uh, you know, look at it a little bit longer term and see if we can uh, see where the actual low is. You see, we've had a tremendous move in wheat over the uh, over the past. Uh, oh dear, I've got uh, a little bit of data problem. This never fails when you're. Uh, I will get this out of the way here, and then we'll take a look at it. Yeah, here we go. We've got wheat here. 
and uh, I'm going to put in the retracement pattern because if this comes in at the 382 of our last low, oh dear, we're almost there now. Yeah, we are at the 382 right now, and we're completing an ABCD. So this could be a very interesting, um, a very interesting formation here. Let me uh, draw the, the pattern in, and then I want to get it in because I think the the ideal play. Oh yeah, we've got to go about another few cents. So I would be looking to buy wheat around the $8 level. I'm not going to risk more than $0.10. Cents. That's $500 uh, in the wheat market. Uh, you know, that's, the way that works is that uh, a wheat contract is 5,000 bushels, and it trades in pennies per bushel. So if you have 5,000 pennies, that's $50, $50, and that's how they get the uh, value of the contract, and it's 5,000 bushels. 5,000 bushels makes you a pretty, uh, a pretty strong wheat farmer. Uh, you know, not not a massive wheat farmer, but, you know, 5,000 bushels is still quite a bit. And so that's something that uh, you want to be able to look at. Um, they, uh, also, uh, our friend uh, uh, Ziao in the room told us that there's a mini wheat contract. And I'm not sure about, I never traded mini wheat, but I understand, <laughs> excuse me, I understand that they have a, 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 a mini wheat, but I don't know. Uh, how well it tracks, and if he said and he's saying it, it tracks just fine, then I would imagine that it would. So we'll see. Uh, we'll wait, and you know, uh, we'll have to wait and see if that stuff. But anyway, uh, this is something I'd be really watching, uh, you know, very closely here because that's a that's a very nice pattern. We're in a strong uptrend in in the wheat market, and uh, you can see that you know we're making the ABCD pattern, and this is the first really good one we've had in quite some while, quite some time, and but you know. The thing that can happen is, you know, corn can go down and wheat can go up because they, that corn wheat spread is one of the um, actively traded spreads. And the spreads is when you buy one contract against another, and the corn wheat spread is a, is a really big one. And so it wouldn't be un, unheard of for corn to go down and wheat to go up. That, that wouldn't be uh, – uh, so you have to trade each, each one separately on its own merits, and that's why we'll look at We'll follow this. Uh, you know, over the next, in fact, is next uh, on the next show on next Thursday, uh, we'll take a look at it, and then if it happens on Monday, we'll we'll see where it is. But you don't have to risk very much at this point. We're only four cents away from where the buy is, and uh, then you would put a ten cent stop on it, which would be five hundred dollars. So um, I certainly want to wait till eight dollars a bushel, and it's getting there very fast. It's at 803 right now, so whether that'll get there or not, I don't know. I'm going to put my my limit miner in here just to see if we get to it uh, during the show that we have, and then we'll we'll get an idea of uh, you know where we are with that. Now I wanted to uh, talk uh, just a tiny bit about the uh, the euro because on yesterday's show I uh, was uh, you know we were shorting the euro at that uh, one uh, one thirty. Point seventy two level, and we're, we're risking uh, uh, an amount of. Uh, I have to put the different time zones up here. Hold on, just a second, please. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor, and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides Provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now this segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, I posted into the Tiger uh, TV the um, uh, chart of the euro that we were looking at yesterday after the Fed acted, and uh, we were selling it at uh, 13072. Uh, using a 30 uh, pip stop, um, and it uh, never was filled on the upside, and it, it made uh, it made 30 pips on the downside. If you would have been, uh, you know, willing to take it, and was up in the middle of the night, uh, if not, you know, you want to wait because you, you potentially have a triple top here uh, in the uh, in the euro, and uh, now your risk is uh, I would even lower my risk to above that triple top because now you don't have to risk very much at all your risk would be just about two hundred dollars instead of uh, you know three hundred so that's what it looks like uh, in the euro uh, so far um, the main one that uh, is happening right now is the uh, the fact is that we have a uh, uh, a situation now in the uh, silver uh, because we have uh, taken out the daily lows again and that uh, we've gone below that 50% retracement again, and that tells us that we have a, a potential for an ABCD pattern to, to form down at the uh, uh, right around 31.90 per ounce. That's only 50 cents away, and, and, and silver can move very quickly uh, during these times. So that's what it looks like in silver right now. It, it is actually uh, you know selling off a little bit more uh, uh, than the gold, and gold is uh, you know holding its number okay. Uh, 92 is the number. Uh, it rallied about $11 uh, uh, an ounce, 
uh, from that level. But ten dollars an ounce is really not very much, you know, in the gold market. So, you know, it's really doing very little. But the main thing is, is these numbers that we're looking at are, are quite important. We're breaking down in the silver. The silver is the first one to tell us it looks like it wants to go lower. Uh, you know, if I were in the gold, I would, uh, you know, certainly tighten my stop or take a small profit. Uh, is is what I would do. I don't like it when they don't uh, work in tandem because when they work in tandem, that means that people are in there buying both and gold and silver. And when they're not, uh, that tells us they're just selective buyers. And uh, that's all I'm interested in is to you know try to find a place where I don't have to risk an arm and a leg. And uh, that's the the real secret to you know what we're what we're looking at when we're doing these things. Um, the um, I'll put up. The, uh, I'm going to re bring back the uh, the gold uh, the gold thing because it's so important. Because we had uh, this number of uh, 1692 is just really very very important. If we break below that, we could easily go below the 1683 because that's only nine dollars away, and that could happen within a heartbeat. So you've got to be very careful being gold, being long both gold and silver. Uh, right now, that's uh, the main thing that I'm uh, that, that I mean that I'm, that I'm seeing. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit about the Mayan put. <laughs> that's the, the DSL call options, and uh, I just wanted to bring up the SPY so we can take a look at it and just see how the numbers fell together uh, on the chart, so we can look at it. We had uh, uh, it made the exact. A, B, C, D correction yesterday, right when we were on the air. And, um, you know, so I'm not, I don't know if that's going to be the high or not, but, boy, it's a good start. Um, I don't know if the whole thing will work or not. I'm not sure. Someone asked me if I'm still in the, the, the calls, and the answer is yes, because it was Monday, and I was too sick to even get out of bed. And uh, so I was not able to get out of my calls. I wouldn't have gotten out of them anyway, because by then they were only worth about $400. And, um, you know, I paid uh, 1500 I bought 10 So it was, you know, not, not a big thing. But uh, I'm just I was still in them, and I, I don't know what's going to happen. But, now, hey, the good part is nobody else does either. So uh, that's what we're looking at. Anyway, the, uh, the S&P has made a uh, – we've actually taken out the lows, you know, of, uh, of Tuesday, which is a, it's a good sign. Now, in order for, for this to really – to really, uh, really work, you have to get below the 61% retracement, and we're already there. Um, we're already below the 61% retracement. So that last little jab that we had, that A, B, C, D pattern, uh, you know, might have just been the, the, the last hurrah. And the reason why I say that, because if we, if we, when we talked about this on the show yesterday, um, if, you, if we look at, uh, you know, what happened, you know, with the NASDAQ, while well, all this was going on, and the NASDAQ looks like uh, uh, it, it doesn't look very good at all. And uh, we are, uh, you know, certainly in a situation where the, the NASDAQ had been leading us all the way, and now it, it isn't. But, you know, we only made a 50% retracement in the NASDAQ, um, whereas we went above the 61% retracement in the S&P, and uh, we went to the 786 in the, uh, the Dow Jones, and then we went a little bit higher than the 618 in the, um, um, oh, shucks, I can't remember, the, the, the small cap TF, uh, the Russell 2000. So uh, all we need now for validation, you know, that this is headed down is a, a move, another 30 points down in the NASDAQ. Uh, if we go below uh, 2618, that is going to uh, signify uh, another bear market. Now, the good thing about this is, is that you've had uh, two down days, and we're having some, uh, you know, wider bars. And the way it's reversed like this, it um, it is a you know positive sign if you're on the short side. But you know that could change in a heartbeat, of course. But the number to watch in the uh, in the S and P, um, and remember, there's been a rollover from the December uh, to the March. You know that happens on the third Thursday of. Uh, of, of expiration months, you know, the triple witching hours, which are March, uh, June, September, December. And so now we are now in the uh, March contract, and there was a, they, they were selling at a discount, so it's already below that price. But what I do is I follow the, uh, the December contract uh, for another week because it's still traded. There's people still in there trading, and it's just that this doesn't have the same 
uh, uh, volatility. Well, it has volatility, but doesn't have the same liquidity that you're going to start getting in the March because people will roll their contracts from the December to the March. And so now what we're looking at is the potential for this thing to, uh, um, you know, what, I don't know where the S&P is trading right now. I'm, frankly, uh, all I've been doing is getting ready for the show. But if the S&P gets below, uh, the December contract gets below 1420, that would be a very positive sign of because of what happened, you know, in the in the new moon, we had we were running up with a big A B C D into the new moon, and uh, you know that's the you know that's the thing that we have. So, yeah, oh, someone just posted that it was fourteen nineteen. So that's good. You know, I think it still has a chance to uh, to actually work. Um, I, I wanted to mention something about that Mayan calendar thing, folks. Don't, don't you know? Believe me, that that was so far in history, and we've had so many of these things through the years that. You know, it is, uh, you know, don't worry about it. You know, the, the, the sun will probably uh, rise and set on the 23rd of December uh, without any problem at all. And if it doesn't, we'll see each other on the other side, and maybe Tom will have a, the first one to have a radio show uh, on the other side talking about the Mayan uh, calendar. But <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that will happen. I'm not even – that doesn't affect my um, – uh, thinking or anything because it's just really not very much. Um, the um, um, Oh, someone um, asked the question if uh, what would be the downside expectation that I would be looking at uh, on the uh, in the SPY if this, in fact, really did work. Well, the, the expectation that I would be looking at, you know, given to the fact that, uh, you know, we went up and did this, I... See, I expected this to happen on the uh, on the full moon and not on the next new moon. It went up into the new moon, and uh, now it started to go down. Now, whether that's going to be a little different this year, I don't know. But on the worst case scenario, it would give us a price objective of around 1290 uh, in the S and P. That that's a considerable amount of, from where we are right now, and that's a uh, you know really uh, you know really important number you know to be watching. So. Uh, someone asked a question about the uh, the Russell, and they asked about the uh, IWM, and I'll bring that up here, and we'll just take a look at it, because I believe someone asked about that yesterday while we were on the show, and, um, yeah, and that's actually that's actually coming down really nicely, and, uh, and it certainly uh, looks like it's uh, breaking down uh, in the same way that the, uh, the others are, so we'll see if it's going to continue to do that. On the IW, if you get below, um, you know, 81.59, you know, that's going to take out last week's lows, and that would be uh, like a weekly reversal, and you certainly want to, uh, you know, not, not want to uh, stand in front of that, uh, uh, at least on the buy side. Um, I don't trade this index at all. I never have, but uh, it, it does track well uh, with the stocks that, uh, that it's in, so uh, that's all I can uh, mention to you. Uh, as far as what I know about it, I'm I'm only trading the really most actively th the most active things that are out there, and uh, that's it. You know, <laughs> okay. Um, if you have any questions, evidently no one wants to bother me today. But believe me, you're not bothering me. It's eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you have any questions, and um, I wanted to um, bring up uh, the next one that I had uh, talk. I wanted to get back into the commodities for just a second. And uh, I wanted to uh, go to the cattle market because we've had a uh, – uh, when Rich Anderson was on uh, a couple weeks ago, he was talking about the sell-off that he was expecting in the, uh, in the uh, cattle market. And I'll bring this up, and you'll see that, uh, you know, it was really a pretty interesting uh, pattern. Uh, and that's uh, what we've had happen is a uh, sell-off in the cattle. And uh, – uh, we'll take a look at this here. Yeah, you'll see that the uh, the, the cattle is sold off about uh, four cents uh, a pound, which isn't very much. The prices of meat here, folks, are just absolutely uh, astronomical, uh, and you, you, that the reason why is it costs so much grain to to feed them, and they're they're just very very expensive. So it's going to make a lot of us, uh, you know, borderline vegetarians. So we'll have to wait and see. Now, someone asked a question about the, uh, the UNG, which I believe is the ETF for natural gas, and I'll pull, bring this up here a little bit. And um, the fact is I should put up the natural gas first, and then we'll go to the UNG and just to see what we're doing, because we've had a really nice sell-off uh, in this. 
and uh, we should be able to uh, uh, get a, a spot here where we're going to be able to uh, see where we are because we're almost at a uh, almost at a buy point here. We're not very far away. Um, I'm going to bring this up here. This is the natural gas contract, and uh, yeah, we're we're not very far from the 50% retracement which is a perfect ABCD here. I'll put this into Tiger TV so you'll see it. And um, it's, uh, that, that would be the place to look at it would be 327, uh, 327 a pound. <laughs> That's not a pound, it's per cubic feet. Okay, we've got a call from um, Boston, Massachusetts. Um, Dave, are you there? Larry, how are you feeling? Uh, like a run over dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we're going to send you a lot of white light and hoping you feel better for the holiday. I mean, some of that Irish whiskey. I don't even drink whiskey, but I'd probably drink it today. Hey, you know, with the old, my, back in the day, when you used to have, have stomach, uh, they used to break out the ginger brandy. Uh, I don't know, maybe there's something to that. Uh, anything <laughs> with alcohol in it has to have some medicinal powers because the... Uh, you know, Jesus didn't uh, make ice cream. He made wine. So Absolutely. That, uh, hey, that. listen, I'm, uh, I, I took a short position in the XLE yesterday at the close, and uh, so far so good. I was wondering if you could take a look at it and sure. give me some possible downside targets. Sure. Well, you know, yesterday when you were making that high, you were at a, uh, you know, you are making a perfect Gartley uh, sell pattern, and you had lower lower tops which is, a, you know, you're in a downtrend, no question about it. But your first price uh, objective on this would be uh, 69.72 uh, is the way I see it. But, I, you know, it, it depends on how it gets there, Dave. If it gets there very, very fast, I would certainly, you know, you know keep it a little bit, uh, you know, longer. You, you know, like you've had a wide range down yesterday after a higher high, and then you closed badly, and then you opened lower today and continued down. So, you know, if you have a, if this continues down strong with another, you know, wide-ranging bar, you certainly want to, uh, you know, stay with it. But yeah, keep, keep an eye on the volume patterns as we get to that swing point. Oh, yes, absolutely, that's for sure. And if, 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 watch the speed of how it gets there, because if it gets there too fast, it means it wants to give you some more. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I see. Uh, I mean, do you think this downturn is... Uh, I mean, you going to be a long one, or are we looking at a shallow pullback? <laughs> uh, I've been wrong, but I think it's going to be a big one. But yeah, yeah I, I do. Um, the main reason is is the uh, non-confirmation of the transportations and the fact that the Nasdaq looks horrible. I mean, Apple, Google, Amazon—they all look terrible. And um, you know, the a Nasdaq can only rally to the fifty percent point. It couldn't even take out the highs of December 3rd. That takes a lot of pressure on a market if they can't do that when the rest of the market's going up. My, right. my assumption is there's something wrong with Apple. I don't know what it would be, but, uh, you know, the, the stock has gone from 705 to, you know, 505, and if we get below 505, it's going to 394. So that's basically it. we got to take a little break here. Hey, listen, thanks for uh, calling in, Dave, and a happy holidays to you and your family. Thank you, Larry. Hope you feel better. I will. Yeah. Bye-bye. Take, take care. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Hey, uh, we're back, folks, and uh, the gentleman um, asked us about the uh, UNG, which I believe is um, uh, natural gas. It's an ETF for natural gas, and we have a really nice pattern coming in here. This is a beautiful garlic pattern. I'm going to put it into Tiger TV. To let you look at it, it comes in at uh, 1829. Uh, if you'll you'll notice that this will be a perfect 61% retracement off of last June's low. Uh, it's an ABC is two ABCD patterns coming in at the 61% uh, retracement, so that will be a, a very low risk entry point. You're risking probably less than 40 or 50 cents, you know, on that particular on that particular trade. But that's what this looks like. You know, on the UNG, it's, uh, it's it sets up uh, you know really uh, really really quite nicely uh, as far as uh, you have to wait though because it's 1891 now and we want to be buying it about 1830 so that's another 60 cents away and you don't want to uh, you know stand in front of it now uh, we need to talk about crude oil for just a second here because uh, you know crude oil is just having one week one week rally after another and uh, this is not a good sign for the uh, um, for the uh, uh, for the oil market. You know, it's really uh, something. We got a call from Mike in Colorado. Are you there, Mike? Yes. It's, it's, yeah, I'm here. It's in California, but um. Oh, California. Well, I I can see the CA now. When I first looked, I just saw CA, and then I saw the oil, so I messed it up. What's up, buddy? What can no, I help? No, that's okay. There's a Lakewood, Colorado, too. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to get your general opinion on. Oil. It looks to me like it's getting weaker, but 
Yes. I can't imagine the Saudis allowing it to go down too far too fast, but I guess well, what's your opinion? Believe it or not, the Saudis don't have as much control as you think, my friend. It's, uh, it's the consuming public that has more control than anything else. And I know they can turn off the spigots a little bit, but they don't do that because they, they, don't, they don't want to stop that income. But this, if you look at the oil market, you know, we, we had a, a several attempts at the, uh, you know, 85 level has held, uh, you know, relatively well. But the problem is, is it's not had any, any rally coming off of this support area. And that's why it's uh, very important. It's very similar to what's happening in gold and silver. You know, we, we, uh, we bounced off those levels really strongly in gold and silver, yet we have not done that in the oil market. So that's telling us that it looks like it, uh, it, like, it, looks like it wants to go lower to me. Okay, good. Uh, by the way, for your throat, try a little liqueur on ice cream. If you can still eat ice cream, it may not make you feel better, but you'll <laughs> you, you, I mean, excuse me. It may not make your throat better, but you'll sure, you'll sure feel better. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, Mike, I went to the doctor yesterday, and, uh, and he said, well, he said, uh, I can, you can do this one of two, two days. He said, I can give you a lot of medicine, and, uh, you know, you'll feel better in a week. Or he said, I can give you no, better, no medicine, and you'll be better in seven days. And I said, oh, thank you, doctor. That's great information. And he said, yes, that'll be $95. So... I think I'll self-medicate myself this time, and we'll see what happens. That's the, I can say, that's liqueur the on ice. Uh, take your your best liqueur and put it on um, some ice cream. It'll help <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Anything. Actually, my throat doesn't hurt. It's just that my uh, it's just congestion of um, oh, you know okay. whatever it is. I got it from my little grandson. He he goes to school, which is basically a culture tube over there. <laughs> And, well, I, hope uh, get, I hope you get better. You have a good day. Oh no, I'll be fine. Thank you very much, and happy holidays to you, Mike. Okay, I think we're going to be winding up the show here now, folks. So uh, all I need to do is to tell you folks to live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.